My name's Pat Marsh. I am a principal designer at Frog. <laughs> yeah, my name's Matt Franks, and I'm a senior interaction designer at Frog. Awesome. And we uh, we came here with the light trikes, which you see okay. on the left. And oh, Crowd Connect. We Crowd Connect. <laughs> Connect four. On the right. Yeah. Um, so both of these games were created for the South by Southwest Interactive Festival. Okay. Uh, we we had this idea of a theme of the Maker's Arcade. So what can we do to bring old school arcade games into the make space and kind of mix up the physical and the digital? Uh, so where we ended up were full-size light trikes and okay. then um, a game of Connect Four that you actually play by standing on really large paddles. Oh, awesome. Um, <laughs> so Make asked us to bring them here and okay. here they are. And here they are. <laughs> we started working on this in October and <laughs> we're doing it mostly in my garage. Awesome. So, uh, late nights, late nights and weekends. There. We put about 1,200 hours into the light trikes alone between the you two of us. 1,200 hours? Yeah. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, a lot of weekends, angry wife, <laughs> uh, you know, the whole bit. But awesome. totally worth it. Seeing See, the little now kids. all the makers out there are going, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all know. They all know. you got to find the balance between spending time in the garage and appeasing, appeasing the powers that be. Yeah. I think a lot of people saw this and thought like, you know, oh, there must have been like a ton of people involved. I mean. At the reality, like the two of us from the ground up built this in, since October. So, I mean, uh, we really embodied that maker spirit. We kind of said, like, there's a lot of things we don't know how to do, and we're going to figure it out as we go. <laughs> and we had a envision that uh, we had a couple sketches that we came up with at the beginning, and the end result is not identical, but it's close. And That's we awesome. worked really hard to get that, that, yeah. that, uh, that sort of delta between the two as close as possible. So come on over here and we'll show you a little bit of the details. Okay. So what we have here is a uh, 1970s uh, Schwinn uh, bicycle that we hacked apart. We have the flywheel here. We have the, kept it exposed. Um, the original concept was to kind of cover this whole thing in fiberglass, which we tried, but due to the time involved, workout. yeah, we had, to, we had to scale back, which, which was cool. We said, hey, we're going to play off this notion that we're going to expose it and show all the internal workings. And you can see here mm -hmm. the, the, the drive chain for the, uh, the flywheel. Yeah. So the user pedals this part here. Okay. And then you see spinning there, we have a fidget optical rotary encoder. Awesome. And that thing reads 300,000 times per minute right on that wheel that's connected to the flywheel and so that's how we get the speed sensor for the bike yep so we also have a um, we used a potentiometer the first time right down here in the steering okay. um, but this is actually an optical sensor as well uh, that's 360 degrees so oh, beautiful. it reads the the turning of the bike's handlebars uh, okay. and it allows us to within the code reset the center position so oh, each time yeah. that way if it gets a little out of whack we can just go oh, hold it like you think it should be in the center and we'll reset that during the game okay. so you'll like see it. us doing that at the beginning of each game kind right. of asking people to hold it still and then you know take off oh awesome so one of the things you'll realize here is like from a cost perspective i mean this right here is about a $50 sensor. This one here is about $8. Uh, the reason why we use the two is, I mean, this one gets a lot higher resolution. Yeah. You know, it's because you're pedaling really fast. I mean, you really need to be able to know that velocity. This one here, I mean, you're just steering, so we don't really need to it need to be as accurate with that. So we can get away with, with skimping a little bit of cost on this uh, sensor up here. And, and, and these kind of things we've sort of figured out over time. I mean, you know, where you <laughs> save money is obviously like, you know, something that, you know, you kind of do by trial and error. Yep. Um, so the bikes are fully adjustable. I just pulled the seat pack so it allows a wide range of people to ride it. Um, and they're actually pretty pretty beefy. So there is a brake that will stop you if you're going to, you know, if someone pulls in front of you in the game with a uh, light trail. Just squeeze the brake and you will stop. Um, and awesome. we also have the ability to vary the resistance. So, yeah. you know, if a, if a little girl who, who doesn't have a lot of leg strength is playing a big beefy guy on the other bike, we can crank his up and <laughs> kind of level the playing field, so that to speak. That's awesome. Yeah. One of the things I would say we learned, though, from, from this year's Maker Fair is that, you know, Matt and I, I mean, you know, we've got a little bit of a variance in, in, in the, uh, the human proportion here. Uh, I got short <laughs> legs, you got long arms. We work with that. We kind of designed it around our, you know, ergonomics and uh, anthropometrics. But we, we didn't really anticipate as many kids playing, and one of the yeah. things we realized is that we probably could have done with some more adjustment points to make sure that like even small kids can play. Yeah. You still got a, like a, a thing to deal with the radius of the actual turn. I mean, you know, we are dealing with sort of adult uh, scale here, so 
that was one of the things that we learned from you know doing it this year at Maker Faire. So the last thing that we'll show you is over here. We have one box that's running all of it um, with a nice graphics card for the three screens. Um, wow. So each screen, each rider has a screen, yeah. and then there's a, a large one that's kind of broadcasted to the crowd. So it gives them the okay. perspective from the top-down view. That's the right. the big blank white one you're seeing here. Okay. Um, but then down here we also have um, two Arduino boards with. Um, I can't remember the name. Basically, like a, a relay switch, and that that reads a magnetic sensor on each wheel. Okay. And as those go around, this uh, flickers those lights. So that gives you that illusion with the lights on the outside of the wheels that they're spinning. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. Other than that, that's that's pretty much the setup. Yeah. That's the, and that's the physical setup. I mean, from yeah. a software standpoint, what we did was we connected those sensors into what we're using is the Fidgets uh, web service, and that's what gets us all the sensors, and then we use that uh, Fidgets API to go into Flash, so we're using the Flash framework, which a lot of people are like, wait, what, you're using Flash? And I mean, <laughs> it's actually a really powerful framework. We're using AS3, we're using the new uh, Adobe Flash 11 player, and it's giving us a ton of power. The new uh, 11 player adds stage 3D capability, which allows us to tap into the GPU accelerated graphics, and we can compete with Xbox 360, we can compete with the PS3, we can compete with all of the mainstream gaming platforms on there, and it's it's all accessible now to anybody who can understand the basics of Flash. Well, I say that, but then we're also using on top of that Flare 3D, which is a great platform that we're using that enables us to be able to make these rich, awesome 3D games. Yeah, and I mean, it's that thing that, you know, it's part of it that, that kids and, and adults alike, they expect that from games now. And so we had to kind of take it to that next level, which at the beginning we were like, I don't know if we're going to be able to go 3D, but it was yeah. all worth it, I think. Yeah, it was worth the time invested. I, yeah. I think seeing some of the, the little faces when oh, they were on the bikes. And, and like, some of the big faces, oh, like, my dude. God. So, you know, <laughs> Uh, hopefully one or two dreams we, you know, we, we made possible. It was Absolutely. Pretty cool. And thank you so much for bringing all this awesome stuff. We really appreciate sure, it. Sure, thank you. Have a good it, we had as much fun as everybody else. So it was <laughs> awesome. You got out of the building. Yay! We're alive. So. <laughs>